Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. You know, the other day I was on a Flat Earth forum and they started talking about the ideal gas law and how that is responsible for decreasing pressure with elevation. And I decided to make another episode of Flurf Say the Darndest Things. So let's take a moment and talk about the ideal gas laws. Now, let's look at the Flat Earth claim real quick. Uh, the Flat Earth claim is that the Earth is planar with some topography. And I'll go along with that. Let's go ahead and assume that that's correct for the moment. The other thing that they claim is that there's a firmament over the Earth containing the atmosphere from the vacuum of space. And as you can see here, we've got a nice dome over the Earth. And I got to asking myself a couple of questions. Does this dome expand and contract? Is there any way to change the volume of the dome? Think about that for a moment, because so far what I've gotten from the Flat Earthers is no, it doesn't expand and contract, the volume is fixed. And the other thing that they'll claim is, oh no, there's seven different layers of the dome, and apparently parts of it can open or close to maybe suit their needs. Now before we get into it too deeply, let's figure out what an ideal gas is. It actually has a definition, and we need to pay attention to that. This is from the Encyclopedia Britannica, and it's a very nice definition, so we're going to use this. An ideal gas can be derived from the kinetic theory of gases and relies on several assumptions. Number one, that the gas consists of a large number of molecules, and these molecules are in random motion and obey Newton's laws of motion. That's a key thing. They obey Newton's laws of motion. So if you cite the ideal gas law, you have to be in agreement with Newton's laws of motion. It's a requirement. Second, the volume of the molecules is negligible compared to the overall volume of the gas. So if we take a mole of oxygen molecules, that is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules, okay? And it occupies a volume of 22.4 liters under standard temperature and pressure. So even though that's a huge number of molecules, the individual molecules have such a tiny volume that the overall volume of the molecules themselves is very small compared to the total volume of the gas. Now the third requirement is also very important. No forces act on the molecules except during the perfectly elastic collision of the molecules between themselves. In other words, there are no external forces, i.e. gravity or electrostatics or ether or whatever you want to talk about. So is the atmosphere an ideal gas? Well, no, it's not. There are forces acting on the molecules of the atmosphere. They do have volume. They do have mass. And they don't always move in perfectly random motions. So even though I say that, we can get a good general idea of how gases act in our atmosphere by applying the ideal gas laws. But let's have a look at the flat earth situation. Now the thing that I want to emphasize again is that on a flat earth covered with a dome, the volume of the atmosphere does not change. How does that impact the ideal gas laws? Let's have a look. So here is the ideal gas law. Pressure times volume equals NR temperature. Now, N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant. Pressure, volume, and temperature, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. You can use any unit of pressure that you want. Uh, for example, I'm going to use 29.92 inches of mercury. That's a standard atmosphere under standard conditions. The volume is, well, it's just volume. We'll do that in, say, cubic meters. And uh, the temperature, we're going to use Kelvin, which is the Kelvin scale. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the Kelvin scale, it goes from absolute zero to infinity. And zero degrees Celsius is 273.15 degrees Kelvin. To get the temperature in Kelvin, you just subtract 273.15 degrees. Now, the cool thing about gas laws is that we don't change the number of moles in the gas, and the gas constant, of course, is a constant. So these two figures right here, are constants. And if we want to, we can just divide both sides by the temperature and we end up with what's called the universal gas law, which is this. Now, the reason that that is useful is that we can take P1, V1, and T2, and we can change those conditions and get P2, V2, and T2, and they will equal each other. 
But again, you've got a couple of variables here. Sometimes it's very useful to break this down a little bit. So using this same equation, what we can do is we can come up with something called Boyle's Law. Now Boyle's Law says that P1, V1, equals P2, V2. In other words, it comes from this. So if, if we hold the temperature stable, and we just say change the pressure of the gas, we can predict what the new volume will be. Now another uh, law that is very commonly used is called Charles' Law. Now Charles' Law holds pressure stable, so we end up with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And these all make a lot of sense. Now what happens if we hold the volume stable and we change the temperature or the pressure? Well, that comes up to this. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, and that is called Gay-Lussac's Law. I did this on a flat earth forum the other day, and they all got a case of the giggles because it's Gay-Lussac's Law. Um, childish. Let's relate this back to our picture of the flat earth, and that is a flat plane with topography covered by a rigid dome of fixed volume. If you can't change the volume, what happens to Boyle's Law? And what happens to Charles' Law? Let's look at Boyle's Law, for example. So, if we have P1, V1 equals P2, V2, but V1 equals V2, we can simply divide both by volume, and we get P1 equals P2. However, if P1 and P2 are different, they can't be equal to each other. They can only be the same value. So Boyle's Law simply doesn't work anymore. The same thing happens with Charles' Law. If you hold the volume fixed, you can't use Charles' Law. So the only one that's left is Gay-Lussac's Law. So these two no longer work on the flat Earth. And we can't talk about them anymore because we can't change the volume of the atmosphere under the dome. Now flat Earthers are famous for claiming that the pressure gradient of our atmosphere is due to the change in temperature. And it is indeed true that when you go up in the atmosphere, not only does the pressure decrease, the temperature decreases quite a bit too. So let's look at standard temperature and pressure. Now this data, of course, is verified by aircraft and weather balloons. So it's going to be part of our premise that we're going to accept this actual real world data as factual. Now let's have a little closer look at Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law relates two things, pressure and temperature in an ideal gas environment. Now the atmosphere of the earth, of course, is not an ideal gas. It's also a very large container, so the ideal gas laws break down a little bit because there are outside forces acting on the atmosphere of the earth. Now standard temperature and pressure is given uh, as 101.3 kilopascals. A pascal is one newton per square meter, and a kilopascal is a thousand pascals and the temperature is given in Kelvin which is 273.15 degrees that's zero degrees Celsius so we should be able to set up this equation using the Gay-Lussac's law and that is 101.3 which is the pressure in kilopascals over 273.15 Kelvin now given the fact that the temperature at 10,000 meters is 50 degrees below zero Celsius, that means that the temperature there is going to be 223.15 Kelvin, roughly. And we should be able to solve here for X. What we do is we just multiply both sides by this number right here, and I'll do that real quick. So while you're welcome to do the math, I went ahead and did it for you, and the pressure should be 82.75 kilopascals at 10,000 meters. Pretty straightforward equation. But what is the actual pressure at 10,000 meters? But what is the actual pressure at 10,000 meters? Well, it's actually 24.75 kilopascals. So why is it different? Again, look back at the definition of an ideal gas. Part three of that definition is that there are no outside forces acting on the gas. We have outside forces acting on our atmosphere. Therefore, it's not an ideal gas. It simply doesn't work. Now, because of these factors, we have to use another equation 
to predict pressure at any given altitude. We can't use the ideal gas equation. Uh, this is the equation that we can use. Let me explain the terms in this equation. The pressure P at any given altitude equals the pressure at sea level times one minus the temperature lapse rate of the atmosphere times the height above sea level in meters over the original temperature at sea level. And that value is raised to an exponent. And that exponent equals the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the molar mass of dry air over the gas constant times the lapse rate of the atmosphere. Let's see if we can do the math on this and predict what the pressure will be at 10,000 meters, and then we'll compare it against reality. Now, just for funsies, I went ahead and did this. Um, as you can see, my math is right there. The one minor change that I made was that I created a constant for the exponent because it's just a little easier to see, but those are the actual numbers involved. And as you can see, I come up with an answer of 23.92 kilopascals. That's very, very close to what we talked about earlier, which is right here. And as you can see, that's 24.75 kilopascals. Now, why is my answer a little bit different than reality? Well, more than likely rounding errors, but it's a fair sight closer than 82.75. So, the bottom line is uh, the atmosphere is not an ideal gas. The pressure gradient is due to the acceleration of gravity, uh, and we've just demonstrated that with the equation that I used right here, which successfully predicted the pressure at 10,000 meters. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. That's your science lesson for today. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit a like and subscribe. If you are so inclined and want to support the telescope project, it's still ongoing and I just made another nice payment on it. Thanks to your support. Take care, guys.